I guess sometimes they, they're afraid of being wrong. And I think the more difficult the unit is, the less somebody is going to try and, um, and get involved. But I think um, that, that if the tutorial sets, if the tutor exp it has set questions and things like that, it makes a big difference. You kind of have a bit of time to answer it when they go home and then follow up on it the, the week after. Like at the start of a tutorial, maybe the tutor will go through structure things going, uh, this is what we learnt, um, going through like just a short summary of what we've learnt this week and then like do some questions and then have an interactive thing and anyone who has questions just raise it up and have a group discussion and like not try to give, give the answer straight away, get everyone to discuss the question and just shoot out answers. Well, if, some, if someone's not responding to a particular question and if you keep on persisting, like, you know, saying that, okay, let's do this, come on, you have to say it, you have to say it, then that's only going to create more problem. Uh, you have to move on. Um, a lot of tutors, um, when they see that there is no response, they keep on answering by themselves so that people would be more participative. Um, that helps sometimes, um, you know, making sure that just giving a wrong answer, like the tutor sometimes gives a wrong answer to a question and then says, oh, this is the answer and then let someone from the group actually say you're wrong. That helps because then you know that the tutor is trying to ease you, like make you comfortable. First of all, he should ask like open-ended questions, not with a yes or no answer, so that someone has to say, okay, this is how we go about it. Or if that's not working, if everyone's just quiet doing nothing, he should ask a close-ended question with a yes or no and then say, why do you think that's the way? And maybe they could get a discussion going on. And once people start talking a bit, they, they get more encouraged and they can speak more. It's just getting used to the fact of discussing. They can always start with something simple like, a, for example, a vote, for example, he can get on a specific question and say, do you think this is right or this is wrong? Uh, I mean, putting the hand up, it's probably the most, easier, most easy thing to do. Um, and in more advanced, he could, for example, um, lead the students on. So, for example, uh, he talks about the question, so do you think this is right? Do you think this is correct? But what if we do this, then something would change. Then what happened there? And then start to lead the students on, at least get to them to think, and then gradually they should be able to speak up. They need to show that they're an approachable person, um, very flexible. I think when shyer students um, make contributions, they need to acknowledge that, affirm them, saying, um, yep, that's a good point, or maybe not so good point. What does the rest of the class think? But just having that um, air of openness, so no one's going to get um, rejected or knocked back for a suggestion. And uh, sometimes you should make some compulsory uh, questions, say uh, everyone should ask a question during every week. So even these really simple or silly questions, you must write down one question. So th I think they got a lot of ways to push students to speak. If you have a student that's always quiet in a class and they're not engaging, find a way to get them, get them, you know, on board. Maybe just you know, crack a joke and say, you know, you've been quiet. You know, what's on your mind? What's been happening? I'm sure there's something you'd like to share with us. Um, you know, and sometimes you even have questions and just direct them at them. If they're not sure, then you know, try to give them some hints and um, try to get them to participate. Um, and, and some students do that. I mean. You know, you can't have a student who's just always copying stuff down from the board and not really participating. But, um, you, you know, I think it's important trying to get everyone on board. Because it's a tutorial, it's a smaller group, so keeping a relaxed and friendly environment is really important. It's not the same as a lecture where um, the, in the information is just being thrown at you and you write down notes and you process it from there. In the tutorial, it's supposed to be, it should be a lot more interactive, um, or it should be a lot more comfortable to raise questions that you have with the um, issues you have with the questions, or um, 
any little problems that they may, uh, you may have with the steps. So having that relaxed and friendly environment where you actually can feel comfortable um, doing that would be great. Be logical. So in working through problems, in working through material, in working through lecture examples, actually uh, go through it step by step, including the minute details. So they may seem trivial and they may seem um, tedious, but it helps so much just to see within those contexts, first step. These are the main points of the question. These are the main points of the material.